Welcome to Nagarep Success, a podcast series featuring the talents of LGBT real estate agents and allies who inspire the LGBT community. I'm your host, David Sirotti. Today, we are on a trip to Divaland with two of the most dynamic ladies in all of real estate. From social media to social issues, Seattle's own Cobalt Banker Bain Team Diva, Kim Colapretti and Chavi Holm. They have risen to the top, so buckle up and let's go. All right, Kim, first we got to start with you. How does okay. a Jersey girl end up in Seattle? <laughs> well, that's a longer story than we probably have time for, but let's be honest, I came here with the dude. Um, actually, I showed up in Spokane first. I was working in politics back in Jersey, graduated from Rutgers University, and was asked with the guy that I was getting to open an office for the political organization I was working for. I was one of those door-to-door canvassers in the old days raising money for health care and education issues. And then, of course, you know, Spokane didn't turn out to be the perfect place for two liberal kids, so we eventually hoofed it back to Seattle and uh, I had a political career for quite a long time before I got into real estate, worked at the Northwest AIDS Foundation for six-plus years, and that's where I met Ms. Chavi. And, Chavi, you're a self-professed hippie girl. How did you end up going from Southern Oregon to the corporate world in Seattle? Well, I'm the oldest of three girls, and uh, we definitely grew up, like, living off the land in southern Oregon, uh, fairly close to a bunch of communes. The whole time I was growing up, I was like, I belong in a city. I do not belong out here in the country. So as soon as I turned 18, I ended up moving to Portland, went to San Francisco, and eventually made it to Seattle. Um, And my first year when I moved there, I started working and doing fundraising, actually, for the Northwest AIDS Foundation. When did you get married? We, we got officially got married, yes, 2013, yeah. It's Just been so, almost, what, 20 years? I think it's 19. Yeah. Yeah. And you said it was a disco wedding? It was a, it was a 54 disco wedding. Performances, there was flowers coming out from the ceiling, a lot of glitter. Drag queens. Everything that glitter. Awesome. Drag queens. Everything. So your life is very, very interesting, and <laughs> as is the nickname, Kim, that you originally chose when you went into real estate. Oh, yes, the diva nickname. You know, I was a political activist before I went into real estate. So my first class I took when I became an agent was to go to this branding class, and everyone was like, you have to stand out from the crowd. And I said, well, what would, what do I think embodies me that would make me stand out from the crowd? And somehow I, I just came up with this diva name, and I was like, okay, I'm going to be Seattle's real estate diva that, that, that would stand me out from the crowd and show that I'm not your typical agent because I definitely was not very corporate. I was very liberal and political. Back then, I was like, how can I let people know that I'm, I'm not that kind of gal? So diva just kind of came to me, and it stuck, and it kind of just propelled me through my career until Chavi and I got together and morphed into Team Diva. Chavi, what did you think when Kim came home and said, I picked a nickname, I'm Seattle's Diva? I really don't think it even registered as it being unusual to me. I was like, okay, that sounds great. Just go sell some houses. And you were working at the time in corporate America. What jobs did you have on the corporate side? After I left the foundation, I initially started working at Washington Mutual, and I worked in uh, as a project manager in project management there uh, with my good friend Dave Nelson. And um, I, so I think when Kim went into real estate, it was just around the same time I had started working at uh, WAMU. And eventually, I left WAMU uh, and went into doing store development over at Starbucks and was there in their licensed store division until 2008. And you had talked about with Kim the idea that in November of 2008, you were eventually going to leave the corporate world and join Kim in a real estate career. You were saving up money for that to happen. Yeah, so I had um, I had been reorged. I had a new manager, and um, I was basically under 
I was in this, I had just delivered a fairly big project uh, for uh, for Starbucks, and the manager just was like, we, the two of us just never synced up ever. And he he sent me this email and he said, uh, you're in, inept at what you do. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I quit. And he he said, you don't really mean that. I was like, no, I really mean that. I'm going to go join Kim in real estate. And but mind you, this is March of 2008. And I, I think I just think the universe all the time that he sent me that email and I got angry enough just to leave because I'm relatively a conservative person when it comes to financial issues. So not I, there was no way I would have left in November of 2008 during the actual crash. But we're going to come back to continue this part of the story. But first, we want to talk about Nagara, which was founded in 2007. It's a nonprofit with a mission of business and advocacy and is nearing 1,500 national members. Nagara benefits offer a profile on nagara.com, which receives 75,000 unique visits per month from LGBT home buyers, sellers, and agents seeking to refer their clients. It is the leading referrer of LGBT real estate clients. And 90% of Nagorep members close one to three deals per year through their membership. 8% have told Nagorep they close four to six deals per year. And 2% are closing a whopping seven to ten deals through their association with the organization. Nagorep also provides networking with a close-knit group of members learning opportunities, and the capability to showcase leadership while addressing LGBT housing issues at the local, state, and national levels. Listeners can join at nagorep.com. Back to the story of quitting. Kim, Mm -hmm. your partner joined you for six months, and then the economy completely fell apart. Well, you know, it was really, I mean, it was really rough for a while, and it was funny because I was so... When Chavi called to tell me she had quit her job, I was a little bit in shock, but then I was like, okay, that's awesome. I've always wanted her to come work with me. And, of course, the week after she quit her job, we're like, we're going to Paris for two weeks, and went off and had this great time. And then reality kind of set in when we got back. Now we don't have any more benefits because we're both self-employed, and and things were starting to turn. And then as soon as the economy crashed, we were like, okay, what happened, I think, is when Chavi joined me, she was kind of this corporate gal who had assistants who helped her do things, and I was just me doing everything by myself. So I was like, well, you could be my assistant, Chavi. And she was like, okay. And then the first week she was at the office, she broke every copy machine. Uh, I think she broke the the laminator. binding machine, the laminator. We were not good as, like, me boss Chavi assisted. We started to like regroup ourselves and like, okay, well we have to regroup our name and we have to rebrand and we and we were like, great, we're ready to talk about real estate. But every time we talked to someone or we told someone we were real estate, they would be like, oh, that's really sad. How are you? And I'm like, okay, this is not, this is not how I want people to perceive us that we're suffering in our jobs. So Chavi and I basically decided, you know what, we're going to stop talking about real estate and we're going to start talking about what people want to talk about. And we're just going to create a way to reach people in our community that has nothing to do with real estate. So we started doing these shop local events with our friends who own little shops around Capitol Hill, which is a very hip, young neighborhood. There's tons of boutiques. A bunch of our friends own little shops. We have a lot of friends that are artists who work for organizations, so we started doing little mini fundraisers for them, and we did some outrageous stuff. I think our first event was a underwear fashion show at our friend's store, Retail Therapy in Capitol Hill. So you can imagine, <laughs> not a lot of real estate being talked about, but certainly a lot of fun being had, and we were the people throwing this event, and we had it packed wall-to-wall people watching these hot boys and hot girls prance down this runway in our friend's underwear that she was selling at her store, and we got all this attention, and all of a sudden we're like, okay, we're just going to throw a bunch of parties and wait till people are ready to talk about real estate and build our kind of our base and our sphere and just bring people into the fold. At the same time you were doing this shift from real estate to 
becoming the ultimate people people to build your network, you also, in a way, lucked into Yelp. Chavi, how did that work? We did. We met this guy at an open house, and he walked in, and he really loved us. And then he went home, and he came back, and he was like, you know what? I can't find you anywhere on the Internet. I was like, oh, no. Um, and he said, you should join Yelp. And at the time, we had a lot of our friends and clients who were using Yelp and were super Yelpers. Is what They had these, like, really fun social groups back in the olden days. And so we basically were like, well, why not? We'll, we'll get on Yelp. We'll get our friends and clients who have used us to, to give us a review and just see what happens. And um, I, between that, uh, our email marketing and definitely the way we do videos and blogging, it just – all of this stuff just morphed, and we have such uh, – I mean, even today I'm responding to a, another buyer that we received from Yelp. It's just like – it's just it's because our entire life was in flux. We're like, why not? There's nothing that we can, aren't willing to try and at least see if it's going to work or not. Give us a few tips on how to use Yelp. Sure. Oh, absolutely. I would say, without a doubt, uh, make, make sure you use Yelp yourself. So make sure you're reviewing uh, different restaurants and places. And we, Kim and I always have the same shine, don't mind. So try to make it positive. And then a couple things is, like, just get your name out there and just get on it. And if you happen to be in a market that doesn't have a lot of real estate brokers or managers or any of those folks um, on Yelp, you will definitely win the Internet war because uh, places like Safari and other, like, search tools use Yelp as a a primary way to bring up uh, different people. So just get your name and profile out there and then ask five of your closest uh, folks that are use Yelp themselves to leave your review and you will you you will be delighted how quickly and easily you're able to just kind of rise to the top of people. Well, you also really um, branched out very heavily into the LGBT community. You had drag queens in your videos. You <laughs> yes. took on issues within the LGBT community. Without a doubt, Kim and I have never been shy of talking about our own views about what we, what matters to us, and we've always taken a perspective that our community is the most important thing to our business. So obviously, our community, because we're les- we're mar- married lesbians, our community is obviously an extension of who we are. Specifically with marriage equality, we had this really amazing dinner at this fundraiser, and at this fundraiser, we met this couple that had been together for 35 years, and it was so cute. Stuart at the time said, "Chavi." For my 35th anniversary to John, I would like to legally get married to him. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to do everything. We're going to do everything possible to make sure this happened. And we were already active in our community, but this, I think that part right there really allowed us to use all of this great social media and blogging and our video work and all that work to really, really push on this issue. And 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 I do believe that it, that like any time you're able to kind of be true to yourself like in those in those areas, it makes it makes big change happen. And I know in yeah. Washington State at the time we were able to pass marriage equality, and I think that's something that we're going to continue doing, and just in our our own lives here locally and nationally. Kim, talk about the issues that you got involved with marriage equality, diversity issues, transgender issues, Hillary Clinton the Women's March recently, how did your 65% of your clients who were straight, how did they react to all of this? So no one ever, we've never had any issues with anyone we've ever worked with, and maybe it's partially fortunate that we live in Seattle, but we've never had any issues with anyone we've worked with question who we are and the fact that we're a couple and what we do. And I think, like Chavi mentioned, the marriage equality issue really brought it home for us that we are a mar- we are a lesbian couple. This is our community. These are our values. Why are we being shy or uncomfortable embracing those? And once we embrace that and not just were able to get huge amounts of support from people and see how much people appreciated that we were loudmouth lesbians, as I like to say, and realtors on top of that, because that's not typical that realtors are vocal about their position on things. We really were able to find our groove and our voice, and our clients are beyond happy with us. But there was a group that was a little bit concerned. 
Who was that? It, yeah, it was really interesting. This because over the fall during the 2012 election, we came out for Obama. We did a blog post about it. We uh, obviously were out for marriage equality in Washington State to help pass it. And so when this election came out, to Kim and I, we didn't think we were doing anything different than what we did in the 2012 election. The biggest difference, though, was that I think a lot of real estate agents had been going to trainings, and because of our Yelp and our social media presence and video, they've been told to start following us on social media. So when we went and stated very boldly, apparently, because we didn't think it was a big deal, that we were supportive of Hillary Clinton, the blowback we got from other real estate agents was immense and a little disconcerting for us. And it's definitely one of those things that made us realize that our true community is the people that we serve. People wanted the divas to just kind of be in this box that uh, was not political. And just to keep on sending them the pretty houses and showing people how to sell their houses using Facebook. But for us, like the reason why we sell so many houses is because of the community that we've built and the community that we support. And I think for us, that's always what's going to come first. I just wanted to add that I think, I think the difference also between 2012 and now is that Chavi and I have gotten probably a little bit more recognition nationally and have been out in the realtor broader community outside of Seattle more than we were back then. So we were still kind of isolated just communicating with the other realtors that we knew who kind of were our friends who agreed with us. But it is interesting when you get into the broader base of real estate and you get this recognition, you really start to discover how you kind of are alone in the woods sometimes talking about these issues and how we're a little isolated in Seattle not realizing how political people are here and how not political people are outside of our area. Let's talk about the Nagaret National LGBT Real Estate Conference on October 17th through 19th in Palm Springs. I know you two are looking forward to it. And yes, the conference is moving west after two years in Fort Lauderdale. More than 700 are expected to attend in the largest LGBT and allied real estate event ever. Registration is open at nagelrep.com. That's N-A-G-L-R-E-P dot com. I want to come back to your confidence to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. While most would think you want to stay in the middle, not take on issues, Mm -hmm. you believe that's the wrong way to go. The interesting thing I've noticed, especially when we wrote that Hillary Clinton article, and it got picked up by Inman News. Inman. They talked about us, how we we're so forcibly speaking pro-voting for Hillary and why. And there was a lot of this conversation, you know, comments about, you know, realtors shouldn't be saying these things and you should keep politics out of your business. And it was a shock to me because in my mind, first of all, the Realtor Association is a political organization. They have a political arm. They have a PAC. And I know not all real, real estate professions are realtors, but in my mind, I'm talking to these people who know that the Realtor Association does do policy work, which is political. And if you're a member, your voice is being lent to politics that you might not even know about. And two, from our standpoint, everything that happens in the world impacts how our clients our community, our, the homeowners that we serve, like the education issue Chavi and I are working on, um, teachers, whether they're going to be paid appropriately or enough so they can afford to buy a house, whether our economy is going to be strong, especially these issues around the LGBTQ community, what if they now have the legal right to marry and then they lose that, how will they impact their future together as homeowners? All these issues impact our community. How could we as community leaders, and I see being a, being a realtor or a real estate agent in my community as a community leader, I mean, sometimes you're the first, you're the first person someone talks to when they decide to move to a town. How do we just keep quiet about those things to pretend those things don't impact us? And for Chavi and I, it just feels impos- like impossible for us to just, you know, keep our mouths shut and not – take a stand on these issues that we know are impacting our community and our the people that we love and the and the people around us and our clients. We we can't not be vocal. And being involved in an organization like Negro Rep where 
there is definitely the strong LGBTQ support because we know that these issues are going to be coming up over and over again, especially with how things have gone with the new administration. Why now, Gareth? Why now? I know that you were greatly impacted by NARS letter supporting Ben Carson. Yeah, we were we were not really happy about that letter. We really felt like one, Ben Carson's not really qualified from our perspective because he has no housing experience to run an organization that's primary goal is to deal with housing and his fairly offensive comments about the LGBTQ community are very disconcerting for us. So having Nagel Rep and Jeff be really confident in writing that letter to Ben Carson saying, we are concerned about your positions on these issues, and we're going to be watching how you um, run this organization was extremely emboldening for us and and inspiring for us because it made it feel like there's someone out there in the real estate community who understands that this is not a person we should just blindly say, glad you're here, thanks, we're here to help. And, Chavi, you talked to Jeff about creating an Inman-style ambassador program. What will that look like? I do know the power and effectiveness of getting some very good vocal people to, to focus on an organization and what that can do for an organization. And I, it is one of our goals this year at Team Diva to see NACA Rep definitely grow. So I, so thankfully Jeff said yes, and we've been creating a really amazing group of people, uh, both LGBT and allies, uh, to help help Nagel Rep uh, in preparation for their conference, and then also just really get the the story of Nagel Rep out there, and specifically the fact that there's a housing summit coming up, and that the that there is going to be an organization looking at housing issues in the same way that I think Team Diva looks at them is important to us, and it's important that those stories get out there and that people can see that there are different perspectives when it comes to housing and that we all don't necessarily have to go down the same line with an organization that might not necessarily represent our own personal views or the views of the clients that we serve. If I'm interested in being an ambassador, how do I get involved? Well, um, I would say definitely reach out to Kim and I and reach out to Jeff. And from there, we can just kind of see how – we just want to make sure that you're, like, you're connected to quite a few people and that you have the ability and time to take this issue on. Thank you, Chavi and Kim, for this amazing journey into a land that can only fairly be described <coughs> as diva land. It's filled with social activism. It's filled with a people-oriented approach. And most importantly, it's filled with a belief – that you have to be true to who you are. We can't wait to see you both in October at the Nagel Rep Conference. And if you want to learn more about Team Diva, Kim and Chavi, visit teamdivarealestate.com. Until next time, this is David Sorodi.